Oh, thanks, thanks. I know you don't mean it. It's that time again, chums. The great British Song Contest, a great burden of responsibility, weighs mightily upon your capable shoulders this afternoon, because it's up to you to decide once and for all which of the four songs you're about to hear goes proudly forth to represent the United Kingdom in this year's Eurovision Song Contest. You can vote for your favourite by taking a note of the telephone number which will appear at the end of each song. Don't phone in yet. The lines won't be open until after the fourth song has been played. And there's no need to be stricken with panic because you can do it. The choice you made last year, Love Shine a Light by Katrina and the Waves, stole the show, didn't it? Which is why the United Kingdom is staging the whole Eurovision shebang this time around. It's coming home after 16 years. I'll be there in Birmingham on May the 9th to welcome many and several millions of international viewers. And beside me will be that homely young slip of a lass, Ulrika Johnson. Now, later on in the program, Ulrika will be giving us a sneak preview of the venue for this year's extravaganza. In the meantime, let's see what the little baggage is up to right now, eh? Well, believe it or not, Terry, I'm in the centre of Birmingham, making my way in great style to the venue for this year's Eurovision Song Contest, the National Indoor Arena. Now, this area around me has been completely transformed, but of course, come May, it's going to be awash with thousands of Europeans enjoying the fabulous bars, restaurants and pubs around here. But before that, there's plenty of work to be getting on with, so I'm just going to go and have a look at the arena itself. You have a good cheer. There's more from Ulrika later on. But now a little something for the ladies watching. Yes, Jonathan King. <laughs> the man who comes out of hibernation once a year to act as music consultant for the Great British Song Contest, and each time his dress sense gets worse. <laughs> He's been out and about over the past few weeks helping, if that's what you call it, the finalists prepare for the big day and chatting to the people behind the four songs. <laughs> I'm at the rehearsal rooms where our four finalists, the performers and the songwriters are getting their act together. We whittled down from over 800 entries in the Great British Song Contest this year to our four finalists, any of which I reckon I'd be proud to have representing Britain in Eurovision. I'm delighted that over the past four years the credibility of the entries has really gone up, as has the standard. And I think one of the reasons for that was our entry of four years ago when Love City Groove represented Britain in Eurovision. Strangely enough, the man behind Love City Groove is also behind one of our four finalists today, The Collective. His name is Beans. Stephen Beans Rutten, a second time, are you mad? I don't know. Why am I entering Eurovision again three years down the line, this time with The Collective? First time Lo Love City Groove, this time Collective. I must be crazy. The only competition if you win with no prize? I don't know. No, no it's, it's a lot of fun and, you know, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me back. Greg, what inspired you to write the song? The inspiration, I think it was very much a anthemic football um, kind of chorus. And uh, Bean said, what do you think about this lyric? And I said, great. And that was, was done. That was here it. we go, here we here go, go, here we, we go. go. Yeah. Yeah. When we're alone. I like mixing in the different you know, elements of different areas from around the world, like in you know, When We Were Alone, We Were Dream, uh, the song that we've entered. Um, there's the Celtic tin whistle solo with the anthemic chorus, um, the gospel choir. You know, it's a rich mixture, something there for everybody. So, let's begin with song number one, written by Stephen Rudden, Yinka Charles, Jay Williams, Greg Lester, Debbie French, Nick Whitecross, Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. It's performed by The Collective and it's called When We're Alone, We Dream. Yeah. 
joy to your sister and brother so the light can shine through let it guide you there with when we're alone we dream now if you want to vote for it the number to dial will be 0891 980 111 write it down but don't touch that phone yet the lines won't be open until we've seen all four songs now in case you're interested although I should be I've no idea there were over 800 entries to the great British song contest this year and as Jonathan said a panel of experts sat in judgment and reduced the possibles to eight before the discerning and intellectual listeners of Radio 2, bless him, were polled and selected the four songs which made it to this afternoon's final. So, heady with the knowledge of how it all happens, let's hear from the team behind the next song. Where are you? Writers Scott English, Phil Manikiza, and Simon Sterling. So tell me, Simon, what was the inspiration for Where Are You? Well, it's a song about someone missing someone else and really the lengths they'll go to to actually basically to find them. In other words, driving through the rain and the storms and the desert plains. We found Amani through uh, Debbie French, who's also in the collective, who's in the last four, which is great. And um, went to see her live as well and realized that if she would do the song, it'd be great for us. I was too scared to listen to the contest on Radio 2, but the phone rang and it was my manager Johnny screaming at the top of his lungs, we're in! I see a picture in a frame I see a face without a name Riding alone on an empty train Broken hearts, leaves are falling in the park. Every day is a question mark. Where are you?
Goodbye. Yes. Where are you? 0891 980 will be the number to dial if you want to register your approval for this song when the lines open later on in the show. So let's crack on now and return, as if by magic, to Jonathan King, who's with Paul Brown and Mike Canaris, the writers of song number three, Don't It Make You Feel So Good, as well as 16-year-old Alberta. <laughs> When you wrote Don't It Make You Feel So Good and recorded it, what was your immediate feeling when you heard the finished master? So, um, we're very, very happy with it. Okay. And with Alberta having, I think her voice just worked so well on it. And then we suddenly realised that we'd possibly got a little star in the making here. And mm. whether she, you know, goes on to Birmingham or not, I think she's going to have a fantastic career ahead of her. Well, Mike called me and described Alberta to me over the phone, and as soon as, soon as soon as I got the picture, I thought to myself, right, summer, young, up, bouncy, and uh, it just flowed easily. And I remember walking out the studio at six o'clock in the morning and carried on walking until I got home. I, I was just buzzing. I remember, I thought we've got something special here. Number three, Gonna Make You Feel So Good, sung by Alberta. The number for this song is 0891 980 and The lines will be open in just a few moments after this fourth and final song. So let's waste no more time, but let's go back to the rehearsal rooms and for the last time to Jonathan King, who's with Kit, the singer, and one of the writers of I'll Never Be Lonely Again. I think this song is great for Eurovision because just about the moment you hear it, you remember it completely. And it has great dynamic, and it has great build, and it has fantastic chorus, 
and um, and it has great verse as well. What more could you want? So, what inspired you to put this song into Eurovision? I saw you on the television, looking as handsome and gorgeous and trendy as you always do, appealing for more Eurovision entries. And uh, so I paged one of the other writers and said to him on the page, I'll never be lonely again, perfect for Eurovision. I didn't actually expect him to act on it, but the next day, in it went. And here we are in the last four. Never Be Lonely Again, written by Richard Lewis, Stephen Christopher and Kit. And the number to call to register your vote for this entry, 0891 980 444. The phone lines are now officially open. So get calling. You've got one hour from now to get through and register your vote for the song you think should be representing the UK in this year's contest. So put the old dialing finger to work. And the numbers once again are for song number one, When We're Alone, We Dream, 0891 980-111. Song number two, where are you? 0891-980-222. Song number three, don't it make you feel so good? 0891-980-333. And song number four, I'll never be lonely again. 0891-980-444. And obviously, whichever song pulls the most votes this afternoon, We'll go on to represent the UK on home ground in Birmingham on May the 9th. Try to bring home the crown for the second year running. The venue is the National Indoor Arena, which is precisely where Ulrika was heading off 
when we last saw her. So here we are inside the National Indoor Arena where preparations have been going on since last summer. Now it's an absolutely huge building, but thankfully I've got to know my way around it over the past few years. It's one of the few places in the country able to cope with the vast numbers expected on the night, around 5,000 in total. There'll be 4,000 people seated in the audience and around 1,000 people milling around backstage. But of course, on May the 9th, it'll look nothing like this. There will also be 40 commentary boxes built to house all the commentators from each of the 25 countries. And I can't imagine the excitement of walking out onto the stage in front of all of those people and knowing that a further 100 million people are watching in 30 different countries. Well, believe it or not, it was 16 years ago since the UK last hosted the Eurovision Song Contest after they'd won it with Bucks Fizz. I remember it well. But let's not forget why we're here this year. It was, of course, last year's entry with Katrina and the Waves that got us here, and Katrina's with me now. Hello. How are you feeling? Excellent. How Excellent. did it feel to be chosen? Uh, that was the most nerve-wracking part of the whole thing, actually. It was the, the lottery show choosing of, because I remember standing backstage thinking, right, this is <laughs> by far the most important three minutes of my entire, not only life, but career. I was almost naive enough to, to believe that if I got through the Great British Song Contest and came and got to Dublin, that we would win. I was, I was convinced of that. It was a great song, and so great, in fact, that in fact you, you scored the highest score ever. Yeah, so they so that's say. a bit of a thrill. Yeah. No, as it was well. really great. I mean, it's totally thrilling when you're sitting backstage and the the points start coming in. The you know, and they they start voting, and you start getting some twelves, and you start getting confident, and then you think, no, this can't be happening because I've never won anything in my life. But how's it going to feel for the guys that are going out, you know, on the big night on May the ninth here? Well, right. It's going to be very very nerve wracking. Isn't um, it? Yeah. Well, there's the two bees and two not to bees, and the t first two bees are brave and believe. And the two not bees are boring or bashful. Well, thanks, Katrina, very much for joining us. Now, I'm working with Terry Wogan, and I've heard what he's like. And quite frankly, while I'm here at the National Indoor Arena, I'm going to make sure I get the best dressing room and the biggest French phrase book. Au revoir, à tout à l'heure. Yeah, she's welcome to the best dressing room. These days, a small understairs cupboard more than caters for my personal needs. <laughs> now, look, if you're desperately trying to vote and can't get through, keep dialing. Those lines are still open. And this is a matter of national importance. And if you need another reminder of the four songs and the numbers to call, well, you for goodness sake, pay attention, because this is an all-too-brief aid memoir. Song number one, When We're Alone, We Dream. When we're alone, when we're we dream. Number two, where are you? I would drive through the rain to find you, walk a desert place to find you. You could unlock these chains. Where are you, love? Through the storm, I call your name to guide you. Love could be the place beside you if you unlock these chains. Song number three, Don't It Make You Feel So Good. Don't it make you feel so good. What a feeling. Don't it make you feel so good. Oh, oh, yeah. Cause I have fallen in love. And it makes you feel so good. Ooh, ooh. Song number four.
number four, I'll Never Be Lonely Again. I'll be announcing the winner live on the National Lottery draw next Saturday, so make sure you tune in. Keep calling. Those lines are open for another 50 minutes. Make sure you get to have your say as to which group will go on to represent the United Kingdom in Birmingham. That way, you'll leave only yourselves to blame. Let's see if we can't make it two in a row. See you next Saturday. We leave you with a reminder of our previous United Kingdom Eurovision Song Contest winners. Excited folk. Over the last month, we brought you the final four entries. <laughs> Knowing you'll choose a winner, we well, did it the last time, to represent the UK and storm the Eurovision Song Contest on May the 9th. Now, here is an all too fragrant and brief musical reprise of the songs on offer. The autumn winners, so which one did you choose to represent the United Kingdom in Birmingham on May the 9th? To help me reveal all, my co host on the great day, the polyglotted Ulrika Jonsson. <laughs> Not a, what is that? A, a, mother, a Mother's Day, Mother's Day chocolate thing, is it? No, no isn't it? Don't be soft. This is the newly designed Great British Song Contest medal, which is going to be presented to the <gasps> winning songwriters. Mm. Do you realise that in the hour that we had allotted for voting last Sunday, we received over two hundred and fifty thousand calls on the phone lines Gosh. and the BBC Eurovision website? I was one of those people who voted. Yes, well, dedicated, you see. Yeah. Uh, you're more than well blessed, of course, for this particular job because you have so many languages apart from an intrinsic beauty. Oh, I'm not sure about that bit. <laughs> well, a bit of well, French. What have you got in there? French, German, yeah. Swedish, um, English, Cornish. Cornish is good. Is that good? Irish? Yeah, that'll do. Norwegian. I can't speak a word of that. <laughs> now, look, it's all here. Ooh. And as is customary, according to Eric Morley, we're going to announce the results in reserve order. <gasps> right. Ulrika? Number three, if you will. OK. <laughs> the song in third place with 65,712 votes was I'll Never Be Lonely Again, performed by Sapphire. Whoopee! <laughs> and the runner-up. The runner-up with 66,278 votes was Don't It Make You Feel So Good, performed by Alberta. Oh, good, good song. All good songs. And the winner. The winner of the Great British Song Contest 1998 in the United Kingdom's entry for the Eurovision on May the 9th is Where Are You? Performed by Amani. Songwriters, well done, well fellas. And I'll, I'll allow you to present the, yes, the floral tributes to Amani. Thank you. You must be so excited. Yeah. Excellent. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you on May the 9th, and let's hope you're going to win for the United Kingdom what? No. on that yes. big yes. night. Yes. Well done, guys. Good. I know. Yeah. Well, we can. 
Well, Rick, and I'll take great pleasure in introducing you and hope that you do the big thing for us on May the 9th. Make it two in a row. Woo! So, before we reprise the winning clip, a huge thank you to the three runners up for a fine contest, to everybody who took part. Now, here's a quick snippet of the song that's going to represent the UK in this year's Eurovision. Well done. <laughs> Contest and Imani and where are you now? Won it with over 70,000 votes. So let's hope that makes it two in a row for us. But times are pressing, men, and, and so is Imani. If she's poised by the button, you know what that means. It's draw time. This is BBC 